and welcome back to Excel Share Academy. So here I am again bringing you the MCQ series for SJS page. So this is the part two, and uh, before going to the part two, please watch the SJS page lecture first, and then go to the MCQ part one also. So let's start with our MCQ part two. So twenty first question because already twenty questions have been answered. So in a SGS page experiment, proteins are separated on the basis of. So I guess these questions are little bit repetition is also there. So we all know that already now the SGS page is to totally based on the molecular mass, right? So here the answer is going to be the molecular weight. So few questions are going to be very straightforward, very simple, so that it just uh, testing you whether you really remember your concepts or not. And then few questions are tricky. So let's focus mainly on the tricky questions. Okay, so for example, this is one of the very good questions. Electrophoresis of histones, which has got the pi of 8.5, and myoglobin having the pi of 5.5, under non-denaturing conditions. So it means what they are talking about the native page. Okay, so the conditions are pi 7. So which is going to results in dash. So histones. Before we proceed, you should know that histones are positively charged proteins, right? So they are going to be positively charged. So in this case, <clears throat> so if suppose we are working on this and histones are positively charged, so what will happen? So instead of moving towards the anode, as we know that in case of cathode, as we know that in the case of SGS page, the proteins are Negatively charged because of the SGS, so they move from cathode to anode. But since this is the native page condition and SGS is not there, so here your histones are going to be positively charged, right? So it is going to move to which con which direction? Since it is positive charge, so it will move towards the cathode, which has got the negative charge. Okay. Now myoglobin migrates to anode. Now since it is at pi 5.5 when it is kept in the, this condition what is happening it is going to be negatively charged and hence it is going to move towards the anode so this is how you should solve so in this case you don't have to read the rest of the questions if you know that the stones are positively charged it is very easy to uh, get the answer so what are the amino acids which are positively charged present in the stones it is Arginine and lysine. Please remember, histones are positively charged because of the presence of arginine and lysine. Yes. So the subunit molecular mass, as well as the number of subunits in the quaternary structures, in the quaternary structures can be determined by that. So we know that in this page you can use the uh, to get the molecular weight and. The number of subunits in the quaternary can be determined if you know the uh, what you say the total molecular mass because if the quaternary structure it is made up of, of the same if it is a homodimer so what will happen in the SGS page you are going to get only a single band even if it has got the four subunits or six subunits you are going to get a single band only if it is a homo homo protein like homo tetramer or homo hexamer is there so in order to get the number of subunits present in the quaternary structure we need actually the help of Gel filtration chromatography. So here, in this case, to answer this, the option SGS page electrophoresis as well as gel filtration chromatography is the correct answer. So hence, option D is the correct answer for this question. Now, in gel filtration columns, smaller proteins enter the beads more readily. Yes, it is true that it is true, right? Now, in the case of the large proteins, what happens? So large proteins do not enter the beads, and they are present in the outer space. So let me show you with the diagram. already we have discussed in the chromatographic series so you have got the gel filtration column okay and in the gel filtration column the matrix beads are there so these are the matrix now what happens is that if you have got the smaller proteins it will enter the beads so it will take more time and more amount of collision volume to come so what is happening small proteins will come last okay now in the case of bigger proteins in the case of bigger proteins they are very big so what happens they are present in the spaces so they will come out first so your larger proteins will come out first so let's see the options so smaller proteins enter the beads more readily yes it is true larger proteins elute out first yes it is also true small proteins elute first no this is wrong 
and yes collagen protein does not enter the beads so here the option a and b is the correct answer so option e you are going to mark it okay in sds page gel the proteins are denatured by sds page yes it is correct yes it is correct proteins have the same charge to mass ratio yes it is true because of the sds the charge is being negative to all the proteins smaller proteins migrate more rap rapidly through the gel yes it is true and that's why you see in the gel in the gel at the bottom you see the smaller proteins and larger proteins migrate more slowly through the gel yes because of their size so they will be seen on the top of the gel so hence here all the options are correct so all of the above is the correct option you are going to choose now which technique separates starch particles using electric filter of course we are talking about sds page so it is going to be the electrophoresis very simple electrophoresis was developed by tissarius so this is not nobody is going to ask you this question but still 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 for the knowledge i have kept this question so electrophoresis uh, was developed by the tissarius so option c now moving on to the next the speed of migration of ions in electric field depends upon dash so in this case we are talking about the electric field so already it is a charge we have already mentioned because it has to move from the uh, cathode side towards the anode side right and also the shape of the molecule why because larger the proteins molecule they are going to move slower and if the protein size is protein shape is small then it is going to move faster so here the answer is magnitude of charge and the shape of the molecule now which of the following statement is true about migration of biomolecules so the answer will be let's see the option first the rate of migration is directly proportional to the resistance of medium no it is not the rate of migration is directly proportional to the current yes you apply more the rate of migration will increase low voltage is used for the separation of high mass molecules no you know that already i have mentioned that you are going to use high voltage so rate of migration is inversely proportional to current no so uh, as we have been discussing all the options so the correct answer is going to be the b that is rate of migration is directly proportional to the current what does electrophoresis apparatus consist of this is very simple actually Uh, such questions won't be asked. So don't worry about it. So it has got gel, buffer chamber, fire pack, buffer chamber, and electrophoresis unit. No, so it has got the power pack and the electrophoresis unit. And in the electrophoresis unit, you are going to have the gel, buffer chamber, etc. Okay. So don't get confused. So here the answer is going to be the option D, power pack, and the electrophoresis unit. Now. If protein is separated according to electrophoretic mobility, then the electrophoresis is dash. So, what does it mean? We, we are talking about the SDS page since the entire MCQ series is on the SDS page. So, the answer is SDS page. I'm so sorry for these simple questions, but yes, sometimes it is required because even if you know the correct answer, even if your concepts are clear, we might make mistakes. The electrophoretic mobility denoted as mu is mathematically expressed as this already been taught in the lecture, so you shouldn't make any mistakes. So that is the answer is going to be the option D. That is the uh, the voltage upon the electric potential. So option D. So here, let me just mark it for you guys. The answer is this. So mu mu is equal to V by E. Okay, so do not forget. I have already taken this in the class. Now, next, which of the following factors does not influence electrophoretic mobility? This is very simple. So, answer is it is the stereochemistry of the molecule. It doesn't matter whether it is of this D shape or L shape. Sorry, it is of the D form or the L form or R form of the S form. It does not matter whether it is of different stereo isomers. What matter is the only the molecular weight, the shape and size of the molecule. So hence the answer is stereo chemistry of molecule. Now, what, when is electrophoresis not used? So we know that it is used for the separation of proteins, amino acids, and all, right? And in, also in the case of nucleic acid, it is called the gel electrophoresis, in which we use a horizontal electrophoresis. So here the answer is C. That is, we don't use lipids in the electrophoresis. What cannot be a reason for using electrophoresis? Now, comparing two sets of DNA. Yes, we can use for comparing two sets of DNA. So we know that in the gel electrophoresis, so different different lanes are there. You see the different bands 
of the DNA. So these can be used to compare the two different sets of DNA. That is correct. So organizing DNA by shape of backbone. Now this is something it's not possible using the gel electrophoresis. So this is this can be the answer. Organizing DNA fragments from largest to smallest. Yes, this is possible because the in the gel electrophoresis, the percentage of the gel is around 0.8% to 1% is used in the case of DNA. So what happens is then if the, uh, the DNA size is more, it will be present on the top and if it is small, it will be present on the, uh, on the bottom. So this will help in the organizing the DNA fragments from the largest to the smallest. So this is also true. Now organizing the DNA in order we can see. So we can see if we can use or ATBR is there, cyber green is there. So if we can use these, so we can also visualize the DNA in the order. So here the answer becomes organizing DNA by shape of backbone. So this is, this cannot be the reason for using the electrophoresis, whereas in all the other cases it can be used. Now a researcher is working with a protein that contains four subunits of differing molecular weights. If the researcher performs as this page, how many distance bands should he see on the gel? So this is very obvious. The answer is going to be answer four, uh, option for A as 4 only. Why? Because it already said that it is the 4 subunits and having different molecular weights. So when you run the SGS page, if these are your molecular weight markers are there. So when you run the protein, you are going to see different bands which represents each differ, differing molecular weights. If suppose the question was that protein that contains 4 subunits of having similar molecular weight, then you should see only a single band. Okay, so here it's very straightforward. The answer is four. Moving on to the next. Now, in SGSP, the protein sample is first. So, for this, you need to know how the samples are being prepared. So, as let us discuss. So, the protein is being is first treated with the reducing agent. So, your BME is there. In using BME, it is being treated, and then you add SGS so that the uh, it provides a negative charge to the protein as well as uh, denatures the protein. So we know that SGS is your anionic detergent and then you go for the electrophoresis. Now depending on that, let us see what are the options. So if, if you see the options carefully, you can see that in two of the options, it is given oxidizing agent. And always remember that in SGS page, you use reducing agent and never oxidizing agent. So here it becomes very easy. The option is A, the correct answer. Okay, now next, electrophoresis of histones and myoglobin under non denaturing condition. I think this question has been repeated. So we have already discussed this thing that histones will migrate to the cathode and myoglobin will migrate to the anode. I'm sorry for the repetition. So in a native phase, proteins are separated on the basis of this also, I guess, has been repeated. I'm so sorry for this. So we have already discussed it is the answer, net charge and the size. The molecular sorry the subunit molecular weight as well as the number of subunits in the quaternary structure can be determined by so this is very simple we use both sgs page as well as gel filtration chromatography so the option c is the correct answer over here what might happen if you forget to add glycerol to your cell lysis buffer and then use it for sgs page now this has been already discussed because uh, it was mentioned that the glycerol gives density to the protein sample so that becomes easy for you to load the sample onto the gel. So if suppose you forget to use glycerol, what will happen? It will become difficult for you guys to load your proteins on the gel. So again, the answer is C. You want to run a 7.5% acrylamide gel to run protein samples on. You need to make up 10 ml of gel solution from 30% stock bottle. What volume do you need? So this is very good question. And most of the, uh, most of the interviews, they ask such questions. So let's solve how to do. So here the formula what you need to use is M1 V1 is equal to M2 V2. So what is required? 7.5% but we don't know how much ml. So no, it is given. It is 10 ml. And then M2 it is given uh, the 30% stock but we don't know how much. Right? So let us say this is X. So X is equal to 7.5 into 10 divided by 30. So once you cancel, what you get is 2.5. Here, answer is 2.5 ml. Okay, so this is how you do. Next, you need to make up 10% ammonium per sulfate solution. What mass of powder will you need to make up 5 ml of solution? Now again, this is very interesting question. 
so we know that it is 10% 10% means 10 gram in 100 ml so how much they are asking 5 ml so how many times we can do this thing so if you divide this becomes 1 gram in 10 ml if i reduce again less it becomes this divide by half so what do you get is 0.5 divided by 5 ml so this is the answer okay so what is the option then the option is c so 0.5 g is required next you prepare protein extracts from four different tissue types and get the blot above when you probe the samples for your protein of interest so this is the probe this is the uh, blot you get now an extracellular protein called in according to your antibody data you expect a band around 130 kilo dalton how could you explain these data now if you see the data over here you can see that this is around 128 is given right but it is given in the question that it is expected to have around 130 kilo dalton so it is given 130 kilo dalton but you see over here some differences is there so you can see that these four are nearby to 130 but again there is a decline in the molecular weight so let's see what are the options given a problem occurring during the transfer then it should affect the all so this is not the option the protein is differently differentially glycosylated in all the different tissues yes this is possible the proteins have degraded to different extent so if suppose it was degraded then you would have not seen the bands the protein is phosphorylated in different position in different tissue phosphate group is very small so it won't make any difference in the molecular weight so from all the options what i feel is the correct answer is the protein is differentially glycosylated in the different tissue because glycosylated means extra sugar group is present now that group is going to make changes in the molecular weight and hence you can see the changes in the molecular weight of the protein in different different tissues so this is a last question so we are going to match the buffer to the protein so let's see what all proteins are given protein a epitelmo growth factor protein b integrin b4 it's a transmembrane protein protein c keratin 14 which is an insoluble cytoskeletal protein and protein d as soft line what are the buffers given 6 molar urea so all denaturing conditions is given buffer 2 50 millimolar tris then again non ionic detergent uh, triton x hundred is there then sodium deoxyfolate is also there and nacl sgs everything is there buffer 3 there is nothing is there so now what you have to see is how you are going to match all this thing okay so this is this question is really good and it is going to encourage you to think about the proteins you actually want to investigate at all stages of the blotting process so different proteins are there in the biochemistry which will influence their solubility in different conditions so each protein have got their own biochemistry which will help in understanding their solubility okay for simple soluble proteins you can likely use less stringent conditions that often proteins Uh, are than the other protein so like normal protein you can use in normal tris alone conditions will be enough whereas in the case of transmembrane protein or nuclear protein you need ionic detergent so that it will get solubilized the it will get solubilized from the membranes hence you can use the buffers which are having sgs or triton x hundred and sodium deoxyglycolate deoxyglycolate now if you talk about the large structure proteins then you may need to go for even further where you need to use sgs buffer okay so if suppose you're not thinking about all these beforehand what will happen you will not find the stuff in which you're interested and what will happen eventually all the proteins will go into the pellet and you will get nothing on your blood so from all this conclusion what we get is the option is c so a3 b2 c1 d2 so you see that integrin transmembrane protein is a and d is your sox nice so these are your transmembrane protein so you need uh, detergents in order to solubilize the proteins okay then you have got the c1 which is a keratin insoluble cytoskeletal protein for which you need uh, high denaturing condition uh, denaturing condition media buffer so that it will get solubilized in the buffer okay and then last is epitelmo growth factor for which you need a simple buffer right so that's all for uh, the is m sgs base mcq questions i hope this was helpful for you all please go through the second part also very carefully and try to do all the numericals and this question was specially designed so that you can you know actually predict and understand how exactly to carry out the 
questions or the problems which are faced in the research life okay so really thank you for watching if you like the video please share and subscribe any comments and suggestions are really appreciated if any other queries are there you can uh, ask and uh, you can ask and comment us on excelsior academy 1228 at gmail.com thank you